always fascinating to pour through all these things. And uh, remind our viewers how you go about actually detecting some of these more harmful apps, what, what researchers you deploy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things that we realized several years ago was that it was important for us to have visibility into devices that are actually out in the world and being used by people sort of in real time. Mm. Um, so in order to provide that bird's eye view, we began to run security checks on those devices. We, we run about 700 million security checks per day right now across the ecosystem. So we get visibility onto over a billion and a half devices. Phenomenal numbers. Uh, if I, ha I do indeed have an Android powered phone, what do I do to avoid some of these more potentially harmful apps? Yeah, the simplest thing that you can do is be conscious of where you're getting your applications. Mm. Um, we've found that uh, users that download applications from Google Play are much safer, um, almost a full order of magnitude, so almost 10 times less likely to install a potentially harmful application than if they were getting it from another place or another store. And this is where the risks sort of creep in because, of course, you work with dozens of carriers, you work with many device manufacturers. Have you got a bird's eye perspective on where geographically or regionally some of the more weakness, weakness prone ones are coming from? And, and indeed, are you taking sort of more control from these various carriers that work with you? Yeah, it's actually hundreds of carriers. It's an incredibly diverse ecosystem. It's amazing how big it is. And um, country by country, it's often in, in the dozens. Um, there are some areas of the world where we see greater risk. Um, mm -hmm. They tend to correlate to how frequently devices are being brought up to date, uh, how new those devices are. Uh, and so we do see that sort of uh, distribution. Um, North America tends to be one of the safer places, mm -hmm. uh, as does Europe and some of uh, some countries like Japan in, in Asia. So it's emerging markets, really. Yeah, it definitely is an area that um, we need to make a, a more concerted investment investment uh, across the ecosystem is providing protections for those who, frankly, in the past, haven't been able to afford those types of protections. And so one of the great things is that Android is providing access to technology, and we as an ecosystem are taking it upon ourselves to make sure that that's safe access to technology as well. We were just talking about the update to the Android operating system, mm -hmm. and it's still only in, in development works, but will that have a keen focus on security? Do we have any idea of how that's going to be updated? Oh, absolutely. There's a, a number of important security features uh, in the new version of Android, as there have been in the last several uh, releases. Uh, one of the most important features that has received a lot of attention is encryption. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's mentioned in the report is that we saw encryption rise to almost 80% of Android 7.0 users, so the release that went out last year. Um, so 100 million users now that have encryption turned on by default. Um, and that includes in those areas of the world that you mentioned that previously just haven't had access to that kind of protection. I mean, we speak on a very tragic day where London, the capital of the UK, has just seen yet another terrorist attack. And, and it's interesting that you talk about encryption at this time because this is where we've actually seen the world of, of technology and, and cybersecurity co collide in some ways. Can you see where, where you, you see your role in terms of cybersecurity and the terrorist threat when it comes to encryption? I think what we've seen with technology um, is that it enables people to become closer together, uh, communicate more effectively, and understand what's going on in the world. Um, especially on a, a day like today where we're very concerned about what we've seen and we're still finding out the information. Um, that kind of communication and uh, ability to share information is absolutely critical. So keeping the network up and above and beyond is, is obviously of key importance, but what about when we see perhaps the leaks that we got from WikiLeaks about what the government here in the United States is able to do in terms of monitoring. It is terrorist threats, but still wanting to be able to access our own our own devices, but not break the encryption. Wh where do you feel that tension lies? Is this something that te you're re having to respond to in many ways? We look at every potential threat to users of Android devices, uh, no matter where it's coming in the world. Um, so we've certainly looked at those cases, and we'll continue to investigate to try to find out what, what we can know and how we can improve those protections. Um, we take it very seriously, is making sure that Every user of an Android device, no matter where they are in the world, gets those kind of protections. I mean, what's fascinating is also just in the press that, you know, planes, air travel, not allowing laptops or, or products, whether it be um, also tablets onto certain flights. How is that something that you have to work within, whether they can be made into explosive devices? I have no idea whether this is something that Google has to look at. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that um, I'm most proud of in the Android Security Report is that our, our goal is to make information available about what real threats are uh, yeah. and what those, where those threats originate. Uh, and so I think you're pointing to a perfect example where we don't know uh, exactly what the concerns are there. And the more information can be made available, the, the better security decisions that we can all make. Um, so looking forward to finding out some of the facts that are behind some of those types of decisions.